No trivia today. I'm sorry for the folks out there who really look forward to that aspect of the show. I don't know why, but Chris, you get the first pick. It's hard for me not to go to Baltimore, and I'm going to go with the defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald, right? I, it just, again, and I, I know there's probably a lot of blame to go around here, but he's the defensive head coach or the, de you know, the defensive coordinator in charge of that. And, yes, they blew a lead and blew it, you know, egregiously to the point where you go, hey, they, it might have been fine if they let up some touchdowns. That's fine, but not that quickly. I mean, really, if they don't happen that quickly, it's still going to be almost impossible for the Dolphins to come back in the football game. But the fact that it's, you know, two plays, three plays, boom, you know, seven plays in three minutes, it, it's just they, they fell apart. And obviously we're asking some younger players or new people that are part of their defense and Marcus Williams and Hamilton – and then 22, the rookie Williams there, you know, just maybe it was too much to ask of them to all these disguises and these aggressive defenses. So I'll go there to start off the goats in a bad way draft. And that was on my list, Mike McDonald, the first year defensive coordinator of the Ravens. And I have to say this because it happened against the Dolphins and head coach Mike McDaniel against Mike McDonald. It's McDaniels, not McDonald's. These rhymes are Daryl's. The burgers are Ronald's. I just have to say that <laughs> before we move on to the next one. All right. Uh, I, I have to go with sneaky. Well, let me just start with Kirk Cousins. I'll save. I'll save. <laughs> I mean, it's primetime Kirk. Two and ten on Monday night. Nothing sneaky about this. We all saw it. That's the problem. When we all see it, he doesn't perform at the level that he does at 1 o'clock Eastern on Sunday when we're watching eight games. Hey, Kirk Cousins having a pretty good game. Hey, Kirk's having a good game. Hey, let's watch Kirk on Monday Night Football. Oh, Kirk's not very good. Three picks last night, and I know there were a lot of factors that go into it, but at the end of the day, it felt like same old Kirk Cousins. Career record of 60-60-2. and two. When you consider what he's making for what he is giving by way of success, you know, yeah, it was Mike Zimmer, but there's still some of it that's it's, it's a little bit of Kirk. And this is the guy he's always been. At some point, you're just the guy who you're ever going to be. It's never going to get better. It's never going to get worse. You just are who you are. And three picks last night. Kirk, you're my first pick. Yeah, I, I, I understand it. I know. Yeah, I get it. There's a lot of issues there, I think, with the football team. But, you know, to your point, I know what you're saying. They're paying them a lot of money to kind of make that play, do something to kind of get the energy change and – that didn't seem to ever happen last night. So uh, it's an issue. And, man, whew, being the quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings on a night after you lost, you don't want to deal with Florio that day. That's just not a good day to deal with you. Um, what do I go here? You know, I want to go like a, uh, the Browns. The Browns. Do I go Stefanski? Do I go Joe Woods? I'm going coaches here. It's kind of a double whammy hey. here. But, I was I was going to go Stefanski last okay. round. So I, I love Kevin Stefanski, yeah. coach of the year, but inexcusable. If you are a high end coach, you can't do what they did at the end of game on Sunday against the Jets. Yeah, you can't do it. That's right. I mean, let alone let you just you know, there's a coverage mix up. You know, we all thought maybe it was Denzel Ward, and I haven't again watched this game on film totally here, but I did watch the last few minutes just to figure out what happened there. And I want to see exactly what happened, but to let just somebody go free, Corey Davis, or an easy one-play touchdown. But the real question is, yes, the touchdown that Nick Chubb ran to make it 30-17, to 17, right? Mike, that's where we're going here. The Jets had no timeout. It was, let me just get this straight, first and 10 with 2.02 left. So, yes, the two-minute warning's going to stop the clock after this. All right, so let's just say the play goes, and it's a minute and 58 seconds. All right? So now they run the second down play. It's 40 seconds from there, right? So now you're at a 118. And then, okay, they run the third down play, and you're down to 38 seconds or so. Plus, you're going to now kick a field goal and still be up two scores, right? But instead, they score the touchdown and give the opportunity to where, you know, Nick Chubb, if he goes down, which on the play, if you look at the touchdown, it looks like he has a moment of, wait, should I stop and go down? And then he scores. Um I gave the it gave a window of opportunity for the Jets it's coaching. And even it's though coaching, it's, yeah. it's coaching, yeah. you hammer even that into slow. the guy's head. Right. It's critical. It's critical to let a guy who is wired to score a touchdown know when not to score, when to get down. It's being in command of the moment, communicating the message. You know, Peter King had Cade York, the rookie kicker, as one of his goats because he missed that extra point, making it thirteen instead of fourteen. But I, we don't even get to that point if Stefanski 
make sure his guys know, do not score here. We are going to milk the clock. And then if we kick a field goal, so be it. We're up two scores anyway. Second one for me, and then we got to take a break. Gunnar Olszewski, the punt returner for the Steelers. Mm, yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't muff a punt. When you're talking about razor-thin margins for a Steelers team that has to find a way to win, you can't give the Patriots the ball when you still have a chance to try to win the game. That was unforgivable. And uh, who, who knows how the Steelers will react to that one. Maybe they'll have a new punt returner. You just can't do it. All right, let's take a break. Round three of Goats in a Bad Way. When PFT Live, presented by Google Pixel, returns right after this. All right, goats in a bad way. Round three. We don't have a lot of time. Chris, you're up. All right. I got you know, for, for lack of better options here, and this being my least favorite draft that we do during the week, I'm gonna go with Hunter Renfro. Just the you know the big fumble and the big the big spot right there. Yeah, Cardinals kind of dominated the fourth quarter of that football game, but there they are, you know, and it's overtime and they got a chance to the Raiders to, to get in field goal position, and they're very close, and Hunter Renfrew gives up the ball. They pick it up, run a touchdown, game over. Huge moment in the football game and, and made the Raiders definitely 0-2. Speaking of that game, speaking of that moment, my last pick is the moron that hit Kyler Murray when Murray was celebrating with fans after the Cardinals won that game. Murray actually filed a police report. Good for him. They're investigating. They're going to try to find the guy. Murray went over to celebrate with fans, and somebody smacked him in the face. And tried that to, like, hide, like, hit tolerated. him and got yes. behind somebody. Yes. Right, right. Yeah. So, good for Kyler Murray. Good for Kyler Murray. People think they pay the ticket. They can act like idiots. They can say what they want. They can throw what they want. They can hit who they want. Good that there's consequences for it. That you is. Know, they find the person, and they prosecute them. To the fullest I know. I don't want to prosecute like it. I want them to have to go into the Cardinals locker room and then deal with the <laughs> offensive line, <laughs> and they can done. do whatever they want. We're with done. Them. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.